Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this thing right here. The mysterious slash controversial EM drive. Originally proposed pretty much exactly 20 years ago by a British engineer, Roger Shore. And since then, quite a lot of different studies, including this one right here from NASA itself, try to see if the device actually works and if there's any merit behind the proposition. But as you can probably tell from the title, three recent studies have actually finally put this to rest. EM drive doesn't work. But let's take baby steps and try to summarize the last 20 years in, well, basically one video. So first of all, Roger Shore actually created a company known as SPR Limited that also patented this technology pretty much 20 years ago. You can read more about the original propositions and also learn a little bit more about SPR Limited, the company that Roger Shore created to patent this device, by following the link in the description. But just to summarize all of this, here is sort of what all of this would look like. EM drive, also known as Q-drive or RF resonant cavity, or the impossible drive, sort of works like this. At least according to the author. You would have a magnetron producing a lot of different microwave radiation that enters this cavity that sort of looks like this. It's smaller on one side, bigger on the other side. And the microwaves on the inside start to generate what's known as the standing wave, resembling something like this. Now, according to the author, according to Roger Shore, this will produce more force on one side, larger force on the other side, and in essence will then produce a push in one direction. So this type of a device is also known as microwave resonant cavity thruster. With the explanation itself being essentially that you get differential radiation pressure on two different ends. But there's a problem with that explanation. It sort of violates the fundamental physics of conservation of momentum. In other words, in simple terms, it's sort of like sitting inside your car and trying to make your car move by pushing not onto the back of the car, but literally from inside the car and pushing onto the windshield. Naturally, this would probably not work. Another really interesting analogy here is with a typical sailboat. Imagine putting a fan on the back of the sailboat and then blowing that fan onto the sail. Would that make your sailboat move? Now, I think most of us would probably say no. However, interestingly, there is a video from Mythbusters from about a decade ago that tried to simulate this using this model you see right here. And interestingly enough, they were able to create a little bit of a push by turning the fan left and right, and essentially by blowing into different sides of the sail. Now, it's not entirely clear if they could produce the same effects in a more enclosed environment. Chances are that it's not going to work. But in this particular case, it worked and it was a very interesting experiment. I'm going to link one of the videos in the description below. And so, is something similar happening in this case? Is there some sort of an unusual effect that we can't really think of right now that seems to be generating a little bit of force by having two sides that are different in size? And if so, how exactly does it work and what's really producing the thrust? Well, first of all, several experiments have already been conducted um, a few years ago, with the bigger one being from NASA and another one being uh, from a Chinese university, and both of them initially claimed to have some positive results. And because the NASA's experiment was conducted in an um, almost complete vacuum, meaning that no air pressure and no airflow would be responsible for any of this, a few years ago, because of this experiment, a lot of people started talking about EM drive once again. But a lot of physicists and a lot of scientists were not convinced, because there was still this violation of momentum. And more importantly, because neither the original engineer nor the NASA scientists here had any explanation for what's happening here. One of the potential explanations was essentially from the quantum physics field. The British scientist who I previously mentioned in my quantized inertia video tried to explain this by using the so-called Casimir effect. Now, this is actually a well-known effect uh, where we know that there is a slight pressure, or to be more specific, a sort of similar idea known as the Unruh radiation. And we know that Casimir effect does actually exist, and we know that it does work, but it produces really, really small amounts of pressure. So, for example, if I were to place really, really thin plates right here next to each other, with extremely small space between them, on the inside between the plates, the amount of different particles, or specifically virtual particles created, is going to be less than the amount of virtual particles on the outside. Or basically, there's going to be a lot more radiation pressure coming from the outside than there's going to be coming from the inside. This is actually the result of the quantum physics, where we know that different virtual particles are created even in complete vacuum. And if there's less particles on the inside compared to the outside, there's going to be slight pressure. Now, this Casimir effect is extremely minuscule, though. 
and it still doesn't necessarily explain what exactly is happening with this particular drive and how any of this produces pressure in this case. Actually, Mike McCullough tried to explain it, but so far the experimental evidence does not support his proposition. And apart from the NASA's attempt, as I mentioned, China has also tried to create something and was partially successful according to the scientists behind the study. With China's Academy of Space and Technology even claiming that they were going to test this in space um, to see if it actually works and possibly even placing it on all of the satellites in the future. But the thing is, this was like five years ago and since then, no new developments. As a matter of fact, complete silence. But at the same time, only a few months ago, Roger Shorer himself once again tried to present his new ideas and talk about how his device seems to be working, and even claimed that we can one day create these beautiful spacecraft that can travel extremely fast, or possibly even create an engine that can actually function without any fuel by literally replacing the engines we currently use and taking us to orbit around planet Earth without any fuel. All of this sounds like a really grand proposition, but according to his calculations, it might work. Well, okay, time to get a little bit more skeptical. So first of all, Shore's explanation so far still does not explain the reasons why it works, or actually explains anything that would make any sense in terms of the preservation of momentum. He tries to explain it in several videos, but unfortunately he's missing some crucial points there. More importantly, even in NASA's science paper, despite the measurements of slight force, very tiny force, of several micronewtons per kilowatt, which by the way represents an extremely tiny force, but force nonetheless, one of their own explanations does actually involve temperature change. In other words, they kind of suggested that maybe what they're seeing is not really happening inside of this cavity, but it's actually happening because the device warmed up and because things got deformed slightly, producing slight force simply because the measurement devices were slightly deformed. And because the only other reasonable explanation here is either completely new physics or physics that are broken in some way, a lot of scientific community and a lot of explanations did actually involve potential errors or measurement problems when it came to the actual setup. Which is exactly what the scientists behind three recent papers decided to do. They tried to recreate a relatively similar setup to what NASA had and to what the Chinese scientists did, and then decided to use a slightly different suspension points on the same type of an engine. And their somewhat simple yet somewhat brilliant setup allowed them to once and for all prove that EM drive indeed does not work. Because by using this exact same setup, first they were able to recreate exactly the same thrust observations as the team from NASA, but then they were also able to completely remove it by changing to a slightly different suspension system. So in other words, when a different mounting configuration was used here, there was absolutely nothing visible in terms of any more thrust. Whereas thrust was produced when the device was mounted in the same way that the NASA did it. Which of course means that the best explanation so far is really the temperature. Because there is so much power flowing into this device and because so much heat is generated inside, this seems to also affect the device or the scales used to measure the force. It warps the scale just a little bit, putting it into a completely new zero point, which when measured then appears like there is some kind of a pressure going on on the inside. And so by rearranging the device and by choosing a different mounting point, all of these effects suddenly disappear completely. But naturally, the original creator, Roger Shorter, is not really happy with this explanation and have already suggested that either the design was wrong or that they basically misunderstand how this device works. Although, to be honest, I don't think anybody knows how this device works, if it works at all. But realistically speaking though, it's been 20 years, and we still haven't created anything that seems to work, and all of the recent experiments show that it was basically a measurement error, which is often the case when unusual and physics-breaking announcements are made. Which would also explain why China hasn't mentioned anything in the last five years. They probably realized it was a huge measurement error, and because the discovery was probably kind of embarrassing, they decided to just kind of uh, brush it away. Now, so does this mean that the EM drive and the so-called impossible drive is impossible? Yeah, it looks like it is. It, it looks like there's nothing in there that seems to work, and it does seem like it was basically just a major mistake in terms of calculations. However, it still doesn't mean we should stop trying to discover these drives. I mean, technologies like this can potentially exist. I mean, for all we know, maybe there is a way for us to somehow use the Casimir effect or the Anru radiation to propel these devices. But at the moment, every single experiment that was scientifically rigorous pretty much confirmed that this doesn't really work 
and if such a device could work, we still haven't discovered it. In other words, physics has not been broken, it was most likely just a calculation mistake, and things like that happen all the time. And so on that note, I guess 20 years later we can finally forget about the EM drive. It was a cool little thing, cool little proposition, but unfortunately it's not really physics, it's more like science fiction. On that note, check out the recent papers that I mentioned in the description below, and also check out the original NASA paper that performed the experiment back in 2017 there as well. And thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. And a few months ago I did talk about another NASA proposition of another unusual device that might work, might not work, but even that one I'm not really certain about. Even though it's a very popular video, I still don't really think it works. But we should still try to build it.